Hey, <coughs> what's going on, my friends? This is Dave Sharp. Welcome to Wake Up Legendary. We have yet another exciting guest this morning. Uh, somebody who I'm 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 thrilled to get the chance to talk to. And uh, as you can see, education leads to more opportunities. Um, man, I don't know if I've ever heard a truer statement than that. Stacy, welcome to the show. Hi, Dave. How are you? I'm wonderful. How are you? I'm I'm feeling I'm I'm waking up and now I'm adding the legendary part to it. <laughs> um, where are you calling in from? I am uh, just south of Branson, Missouri, on Table Rock Lake. Wow, very interesting. Very interesting. <laughs> A place I've not been yet. It's um, beautiful. Good good fishing here too. <laughs> oh wow! You know I like fishing. <laughs> well. So. So uh, what led you, first of all, online, and um, what then led you to Legendary? So a little, little backstory. story. Um, I had surgery last year and uh, sat at home for six weeks um, recuperating. I have a job where I'm in sales, and when I'm not there, I'm not making money. And so I sat home for six weeks and binge Netflix and and um, played games on my phone and wasted six weeks of my life. And then uh, this year I found out I had to have another surgery. And I decided at that moment that I was not going to do that again. I was going to actually, yeah. you know, learn something, do something, maybe uh, find another uh, stream of income. And so I got, you know, on TikTok and looking at all the different things people were doing to make money. And they all sounded like a lot of work. I've never heard this story hard before. And, <laughs> and, uh, you know, drop shipping and, and Etsy and all that stuff. And I was like, yeah, that sounds like a lot of work. And then I, I, I ran across this and I was like, Smart you know, that, girl. I checked all the boxes, you know, that's, that's something I can do. And, um, and then, you know, the rest is history. Wow. <laughs> well, you saw some things in those business models just from your own uh, critical thinking or just from your own common sense that uh, you then heard me sort of validating once you started going through our training. How'd that make you feel when when you were like, wow, my gut feeling told me that those business models, the drop shipping, you know, some of the mm -hmm. physical product bi online businesses you can do. Um, wow, my gut told me that those might be harder or just mm -hmm. more complex to kind of get up and get going. Did you feel validated? Like, hey, I can trust my gut. Like I, I, I know more than I may be giving myself credit for. And I say that just because so many of us devalue ourselves when we get started and don't realize that the experience that we have from previous jobs and just our life <clears throat> actually applies here too. So um, you find yourself going through this training now to where you're learning about not how to do physical online, physical product online businesses, but information and knowledge product businesses. What was that like for you? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And um, can, can I tell you a quick story about my dad? <laughs> Mm -hmm. sure. uh, so, so 20 plus years ago, um, he tried to get into to real estate and the whole buy and sell houses. I buy ugly houses, the, the ugly yellow signs all over the place. And yeah. he, he, uh, I thought he, I thought he lost his story mind. time. I'm going to sit down for this one. <laughs> he started spending, <laughs> he, he started spending, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars on, um, coaches and, and, and mentors and masterminds and go into these events. And I thought he lost his mind and yeah. he tried to get me involved. And I just, I never understood it. It was a lot of cold calling. I wasn't interested. And so when I was going through the training, it was like light bulbs going off in my head. Like he was, he, he knew something back then I didn't. And I just, it, I never could put the pieces together until I did the challenge and, and it just the light bulbs and, and the pieces started coming together. And I just, I realized that, the potential and the opportunity and that I never, I never knew how to start before, you know, he would always bring me yeah. this book, the rich dad, poor dad. And, and, and even, um, you know, his wife bought a, he wrote a book and he brought me that book to read and he was always pushing me to, to do something, but I never knew how to get started, you know? Oh, that's really, <laughs> and you know what? That's first of all, that's a really cool story. And uh, you should tell that a million more times. Okay. <laughs> So we're not here to like, we're here for two reasons, people. Number one is we're here to tell our story to all of you listening, but like 
all of you listening may do absolutely nothing with what we say. And so we, so we have to make this time valuable for us too. And a lot of times what comes out of these conversations is marketing gold. When we talk to other marketers and when we can talk to other people who call it a coach, call it a mentor, whatever, but who can draw the magic out of us versus trying to coach you on how they think you should do something. And I think that's um, what I'm what I'm hearing has happened with you. You know, that you, you had magic. Dad was one of the you have magic. Dad saw it in you and wanted to try to give you everything he had and he knew. But here's what came up for me when I was when I was hearing that story was they didn't have the platforms and the tools that we have now today. And if they did, they may have been much more successful. But now, how how does that make you, like, what, what comes up for you? What do you feel when you think about that? Like all the drive and ambition and, that your dad had um, and, and how that's different than, you know, like today we have – in some ways, so much more opportunity, but a lot of us lack the mindset stuff that sometimes yeah. previous generations had. What, why, and, and how can we bring this all together so we can all, previous generations who have great drive and also new generations who have great opportunity, how do we make sense of all of this? And most of all, walk away from this conversation realizing the potential of what we have in front of us. That's, I think, the biggest thing that any of our parents or people from previous generations would want for us right now is just to say, look, y'all got tools that we didn't have back in my day. Back in their day, passing out business cards was the strategy. Mm -hmm. And nowadays, yeah. it's like we got, you know, all these, we got TikTok and Tic Tac and people can't even pronounce it, but they're going viral. How do you make sense of it all? And, and, and how can you share what you see as far as this opportunity um, with everybody listening? Well, I mean, I think you, mindset's a big part of it, but back then he was, he had to actually physically go to a, a an event or a, a, you know, mastermind or something to learn. And I didn't have yeah. that. I didn't go with him. I didn't, I didn't see that uh, with now with everything online, um, it, it, you have more direction. It, you, you, you understand better how to get started and, and you can reach many more people. He only and had, more his, he only had his neighborhood. That's yeah, the thing yeah. That so and his phone, us, that was it. Yeah. And his phone, just in the local uh -huh. phone book. Mm -hmm. And if he was calling or reaching out to anybody <laughs> beyond his own city, they'd have looked at him like he was crazy because that's mm -hmm. just not the way business worked back then. Mm hmm. Well, you know, the, the training was so awesome for me because I mean, I, I'm a note taker. Um, I have, I have two notebooks full, um, from the, from going through the training and, and that's, that's so valuable to me because I, I use that. I watch wake up blood, Jerry, and, and I take notes and I took notes through all the training and I use that for content. And so without mm. that, I, I wouldn't have any direction. Well, that's fantastic. We're glad that you got that that direction. What's it been like when you went from learning to now focusing on earning? It's been crazy. It's it's grown way faster than I ever thought. Um, and it's it. I just I pinch myself every day. It's like I I always wanted to to do something. I mean, it sounded great the the theory and the mindset of passive income, but I never knew how to implement it until mm. now. And so, I mean, actually implementing it. It's, it's, it's freeing. It's, it's knowing that I'm never going to have to struggle again, that I'm going to have to, I have it. I have these skills that I can make money anytime I want. That's mm. been so awesome. It's very empowering. We'll talk about the specifics mm -hmm. kind of what you're doing here in a, in a second. So people can kind of get some visuals. And of course we'll point you to Stacy's, you know, TikTok channels, multiple. Okay. Um, that, that, that's a, that should be a theme that everybody pays attention to is, Hey, look, social media accounts are not your buddies. They're not your friends. Don't get too emotionally attached to them. We're in a weird, crazy time right now to where you could have an account take off like crazy. And, you know, a week later, 
you know, it gets disabled. It, we're in crazy times. It's called the wild, wild west. Okay. And welcome to entrepreneurship. Okay. And, and if you don't like excitement and you don't like to wake up every day and have something new happening, then, you know, this might not be for you. Right. But if you like unlimited upside, if you like to come to work every day, and usually the, the commute is, you know, 20 feet from your bed to your desk. If you like those benefits, but maybe a little bit more volatility, that's the downside of a business is that nothing, it's not guaranteed like your paycheck is every week from your company. Or is it? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so, wow, you got right on, um, basically went right for TikTok, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Started on TikTok. And I noticed that you have an account and an approach where you're talking about helping people find deals and save money. Um, can you talk to us about where that idea came from to, to share that sort of content and how that's been working out? Because that's a little bit of a different angle. Mm -hmm. So um, I've always been very, very frugal by necessity more than anything. I was a stay at home mom for 11 years before I'm in the job that I have now. My, my kids are older now, but um, so it was, it was always out of necessity. I had to be frugal. I was coupon shopper. And that's an, one thing my dad always kept telling me. He's like, do something with that. You have so much knowledge. You're so good at that. Write a mm. book, do something. But I never knew how to start, you know? Mm. And so I've always shopped like that. And so I always wondered how people got all these coupon codes. And then I finally figured it out after going through the training that they're an, they're, they're an affiliate. They're an affiliate for, for Amazon or whoever. And, and they're, that's how they're getting the promo codes. And so wow, I know people will have been a huge breakthrough for you. Yeah. Being a coupon <laughs> or being a budget or being somebody who's always looking at how can I save money and realizing that many of the ways that you're saving money are coming from people who are making, making a referral <laughs> commission from helping yes. you save. And so, so I started that thinking, you know, at least I'd get access to the coupon codes to use myself, even if it doesn't take off. You know? <laughs> and so I started that and I started a second TikTok just, just sharing deals and, and helping, you know, because my passion, I love saving money, you know, and making yeah. money too. But um, and so I started that and it just took off. I mean, I hit my Facebook group just hit 9,000 this morning and it's been two months. <laughs> and that's people, from that, that group, like those mm -hmm. people who you're talking about, you know, basically TikTok, how to yeah. save, how to, be what are some of the other content topics you're talking about with that audience? Um, is there anything else or give us a little bit more context, some examples, because I think a lot of people have a, a creativity brain fart when we start and it's like, man, you know, uh, and I, and when we overcome it and just start kind of opening our mouth. And I just saw a post in our group yesterday that said, man, I can't believe I sat on the sidelines for a couple of months and thought that I didn't have anything to say. Now you can't shut me up. But <laughs> what's it been like for you coming up with the ideas? And then what other kind of topics are you talking about under this kind of saving uh, niche profile? Well, I mean, I think that's the key is you have to find something that, I mean, I mean, I feel like shopping is my superpower. I mean, you have to find what, what is your superpower? What's your, what are you good at? What do you know a lot about? And then you're passionate about it. And then it doesn't feel like work. And then it's excites. So, I mean, I could sit and look for, I could online shop all day long. I mean, I could for fun. Um, but I, I'm, I'm good at that. I can see, I can look at something and say, yeah, that's a really good deal. Or that's, you know, that's overpriced and it, it looks like a good deal, but it's not. And so I can, I can, I can, I can tell. And so I'm posting these things that I, I find that are good deals or, you know, coupon codes that to use on Amazon products to save people 70, 80%. And so a lot of times people will see things like that and they will, they will buy things they don't need just because it's a good deal. <laughs> I, and, no, I know. And, and, and people, people shop and shop and, and, and I make money. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's really, really something. Uh, it's a really cool, it's a really cool angle. But back to answer your question, I mean, as far as what I'm, the content that I'm doing and they're just, you know, basically just, you know, telling people I can help them save money. And then I just get on and I show my Facebook group. I, I, I flip the, I, I introduce myself. I tell them I'm here to save them money. And I flip the camera and I, 
I show my Facebook group and, and, and the different, the, the best deals that I think they're people that are buying. So, and then people yeah. just go over to my Facebook group and shop. <laughs> unbelievable. I mean, Stacy, you're just blowing my mind this morning. It's unbelievable <laughs> because you know why? Because it's mm. simple. It's it is. simple. It, it, I mean, you said first, that I flip my phone around. I mean, mm -hmm. and that could mean one of two things. It could mean you're actually savvy enough with the app to be able to find the little button on the app where it actually flips the camera around. Or for God's sakes, it means that you just flip the damn camera around and are pointing. I mean, however you got to get it done to get it started. The mm -hmm. bottom line is that it's low production. It's all being done on a, I mean, look at my, 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 uh, my daughter put, I don't know if you can see that legendary dad though. And then I, got, <laughs> Cute. I mean, but like, I'm just saying, this is my phone. It's my, you know what I mean? It's my, it's everybody's got their phone. It's kind of almost like an extension of your human body now. And this is what it takes nowadays to make money online. It does not take complicated coding. It does not take, you know, uh, complicated knowledge. It actually takes you to take in a complicated idea, which really affiliate marketing or selling information products online is a pretty advanced idea. You know what I mean? Because you're packaging, but you completely simplify it by just keeping the production low and, and marketing it with just your cell phone and yourself and and then driving people to your funnel. And I mean, that's that's the magic when you drive, when you have somewhere to send somebody. And also, you're learning other ways to monetize, which is basically doing affiliate marketing with Amazon, which is pretty, which is pretty brilliant. And quite frankly, you can go to any website, my friend. Did you know that when you see celebrities online or you you're listening to a podcast and they say, Hey, you know, our sponsor is, um, you know, Gillette razors, the best a man can get And just head on over there to the, to the Gillette website and just put in code legendary and save yourself 10%, right? When people are doing that, that is an affiliate code. That's affiliate marketing. All your favorite. So do you think uh, that they're. I mean, that's tw that's advertising in 2022. No longer is it, you know, some celebrity running David Hasselhoff running on your TV screen or whoever advertising Old Spice deodorant. And that's what all advertising looks like. It's not. Advertising looks the more native it looks and the more that it doesn't look like advertising in 2022, the more effective it is. That's why so much business and commerce is happening with individual regular people on platforms like TikTok. Are you surprised by how much influence in, in business can come from creating a free social media account when you use it yeah. correctly? Yeah, yeah. It's it's insane. The the people that I'm I'm in front of. I mean, I never, it's, 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 there's never been a better time. And with the deals group, I'm, I'm, I'm sprinkling in some, you know, I'm making extra money to help my family. So I don't have to be, you know, struggling. So if, if right. this interests you, there's a link in my link tree to show you how I started doing this too. So I, I'm, I'm kind sure. of, I've got them kind of connected, both of them, you know, promoting legendary on the one and, and the deals on the other, but you know, I kind yep. of sprinkle back and forth between the two. Well, it's a great example of creating multiple streams of income from within the same business versus multiple streams of income from multiple businesses, mm -hmm. which is a, a huge pet peeve of mine. And it's a, it's the number one way I see people going broke and in, in becoming unsuccessful is taking on too many things and getting spread too thin and getting overwhelmed and getting pulled away from what you were doing. How many can relate to that? Anybody have the feeling honest and, and, and awake enough to type that comment down below? Cause I know I've been there. And so creating multiple streams of income from within the same business keeps mm -hmm. me focused on that business. But it also 
protects that business. It builds a moat around that business, sort of like Apple has done, the most powerful company in the world. They have multiple streams of income from within the same business. They have iPhones, iPads, iMacs, streaming, streaming service, music service, all kinds of different services. And so this, this idea of being able to create multiple streams of income from within the same business, the other example would be a, a physical trainer or a personal trainer who, instead of only doing one-on-one -on -one sessions and saying, this sucks, I need to change careers, you know, I need to get into something different. So what do they do? They go back to college. It's 40 or 50,000, four years, six years. But, and then, but usually they don't follow through or finish with that. And so maybe they end up going and doing waitressing or waitering or something in the service industry and never really get ahead. So, yeah, you saying that brought back something um, that I wanted to talk about, too. My the, the biggest reason that I started this was to try to retire my husband. And my husband is, is 55, been in construction for 30 years. He's an electrician. You're going to make him a kept man. Okay. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, let me finish. <laughs> Okay. So he, he runs his own business and he's, you know, it's, it's high stress. It's, it's hard on, you know, physically hard and um, you know, it's, it's tough. It's tough running a business. And so when I was the first couple of days of that training and, and especially when, when you told that story about selling your knowledge in home Depot, that was just like, Whoa, um, the knowledge in his head from being a master electrician and 30 years in construction, the knowledge in his head, I can monetize now and market and yeah. we can, w he can stay home. We can, we can do real estate if we feel like it, flip houses or, or just turn the knowledge into his head, into, into digital products that, that we can yeah. market and, and yeah. have income without him having to go break his back every day working. Yeah. I mean, yeah, just a mat, like they're, they're, I mean, one of the, one of my favorite affiliate marketing campaigns is the Bucks woodworking campaign mm -hmm. we show and often talk about. And the the only thing missing from that campaign is like a live person like that. Whoever was the affiliate who really scaled that Bucks woodworking, go find the Facebook page, it's probably still up. And we, we show it in um, the affiliate marketing business as well. But um, the only thing that was missing was just a personality, like a spokesperson. So it's amazing when, if you were to like anybody, it doesn't matter. It could just be something that you do. It could be one of your TikTok niches. Um, Cause I think when you're new, there's nothing wrong with starting a couple and creating content and seeing what you really like and what you really enjoy talking about. Cause half the battle is you're going to be more creative and you're going to be more, you know, I mean, for me, when I got started 12 years ago, it was, it was, it was, it, you know, making money was everything. I mean, I, I don't know. I just, that made a lot of sense to me. And, um, but there's so many of you who have so much different knowledge than I had when I started, I was 24. Understand. I didn't have, I don't know. Sh I didn't know shit. I didn't know my ass from a hole in the ground. So it's not like I had a bunch of world expertise. But a lot of you have a lot of worldly expertise and knowledge that if 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 today I was starting and I had been doing construction for the past, you know, 20 years, 30 years, whatever. And I was older, I might start I might talk about that. I might get into that niche and just you know what? Even if I was still working, I might just do little videos every day and drop little nuggets and. There's a lot of affiliate products out there. The 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 um the DIY the pro the product that Bucks Woodworking was promoting was those woodworking plans, and so there's a lot of do it yourself or do it you know kind of construction based or even people who like to just tinker at home and do things themselves. There's a lot of products out there, and one other thing that I was gonna um going to point out was that any product, most companies, even if they don't have a, an affiliate program or most prof or most service providers, most businesses, we had a, we had a lady a couple of years ago who went to a jujitsu instructor or something and said, I love your, your training and stuff so much. Would you, would you make an affiliate program? And then she went on to 
do some obscene amount of, of commissions, something like $100,000 in commissions, if I remember correctly, from selling this thing that didn't even have an, a, 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 a program in the first place. And, and don't quote me on those, those numbers. I'm just doing the best I can to remember. But it was impactful. It was quite a result. And, you know, a lot of times we just, we just assume that if it doesn't exist, it's not possible. And number one, most of the time it does exist if we look hard enough. And number two, if it doesn't exist, become a deal maker. You know, again, our income is only capped by our creativity. So you're starting to get the juices flowing about your husband's knowledge and how you may be able to package that in a course coaching program mm -hmm. event, or even as an affiliate marketer. Um, but that that's something that you see and you'd like to get him involved or retire him, which would you define retirement for us? Because most of up until this point, retirement has been, I guess, stop work and sit at home. To me, though, I am kind of retired. I mean, I'm either at my other house or my workhouse. I So in a way, this digital lifestyle where we're working from home is a lot of people's new definition of retirement. How do you define it? I agree. I agree. It's retirement to me is not having to, to, to physically go to a place and, and, and do, 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 do work. You know, for, for me, I have a, I go to my job, which I love my job and, and, but, but I have to be there every day to make money, you know, whereas this, yeah, I can, I can be on vacation. I can be anywhere. And so same for him, you know, if we can, if we can, you know, work online from anywhere, I mean, that's retirement to me. Yeah. You've got another TikTok uh, channel online at the lake. And so just pointing out for those of you listening that, um, you know, Stacy has got multiple TikTok channels. I'm sure you've seen a lot of the, you know, the, a lot of the, the volatility on TikTok and social media with people, you know, might get an account that's, I don't know what you call it, deactivated, banned, shat, you know, sometimes we get it back. We go appeal, we fight for it. Sometimes we don't. Um, obviously I'm showing the, the multiple accounts because it's a stra good strategy for growth, but it's also a good strategy for diversification. Um, is that how you're looking at it? And in what other ways do you, are you looking at both growing, but also protecting what you have? Yeah, so I, I've got those two and and I've got um, a Facebook page, a Facebook group. I do Facebook reels on my my personal account and my business account. I have Instagram, I have uh, Pinterest, I have I, 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 I do it all. <laughs> Sometimes it's um it's it's time consuming and I don't do it all of it every day, but um mm -hmm. but I, I'm on I'm on multiple different because that's that's I don't, I don't want to lose anything. I don't want to, you know, depend on TikTok for my business. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, TikTok is going through a process over the next couple of years to where, you know, the, the government is going to determine whether they're going to allow TikTok to stay in America. A lot of people don't realize that. But um, every social media company goes through that. It's called a sepsis, re sepsis review. And um, it's from government agencies and boards. And um, there's lots of people out there that can explain it a lot more um, than I can. One of them is the Snapchat uh, a CEO and founder. Uh, and I listened to an interview from a, 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 a Recode conference that just recently happened. And um, that's where I heard what I just heard and learned about the sepsis review. And sometimes when you listen to the CEOs of these companies during these conferences and events, you can actually hear with your own ears what's going on and start to learn about how they think. Like, for example, Snapchat's not on board about the metaverse, right? That's a Facebook pitch, the metaverse, the metaverse. And, and, and as if you listen to Snapchat's founder... He's going, well, we more think that people are going to want to live in reality versus put a pair of goggles on and go, you know, hang out in virtual reality. So all of those other companies like Snapchat, any American tech company, do you think that they like TikTok? Chinese? They don't. They hate them. <laughs> they hate them. Because TikTok, sure. 
They're scared. Huh? They're they're sure they sure are scared of them though, and they're competing pretty hard. <laughs> Damn right, they're scared of them. I mean, this is capitalism. This is capitalism mm -hmm. at its finest, and uh, it's it's capitalism in a major way. But my point here is is that it's not like if we if we rise up and look at the bigger picture, sometimes we we get a different we get a different perspective and realize, oh man, it's not just TikToks picking on me and. Like all these companies, everybody has a different agenda and all the way up even to the CEOs of these tech companies, they're shifting and positioning and pay, playing cat and mouse. And you have to make sure that you get yours while all this crap's going on and they're getting theirs. Because trust me, folks, they're getting theirs. They're getting theirs. Facebook's getting theirs. But Zuckerberg's got a. He just announced he's got another baby on the way, or a or first baby. They're pregnant. They're getting theirs. They're building their dreams. Just trust me. Regardless, if your kid is sitting on the couch over there on it on their iPad, scrolling through social media for twelve hours a day. God bless America. <laughs> That's why they ain't, gonna come to your, they ain't gonna come to your house and make sure your kids are having a balanced script. That's your responsibility. And guess what? They're gonna while your kids are on there, we're on there scrolling through social media. They're making money. They're making money because at advertisers are paying them to put ads in front of you. And so the question is: in this day and age. You know, are we going to let social media use us? Or are we going to use social media? And so I go back to the, the multiple accounts, the strategy, the diversification. This you have to approach business in 2020 online with diversification the same way that you would approach sort of like an investment portfolio, because at any time a stock market could crash. You know what I mean? Or a stock could crash or whatever. And a stock would be like a, a, a social media account that you have. You know, at any time that might cry, you need to be well diversified. That's kind of the mindset that I have about business nowadays because it's, it's cutthroat, you know, it's political, people are nasty out there. You know, you really got to prepare yourself a little bit. And that's why I think these conversations are valuable because let's talk about it and be honest about it and prepare ourselves because a lot of us, man, it's going, it's like going into war out there, man. I mean, we're not only at war with these damn platforms, but we're at war with all these other idiots out here who are, are, are you know, projecting their negativity and stuff onto us. We got to figure out how to use that as fuel instead of let that tear us down. I'm ranting, but what comes up for you as I talk about this stuff a little bit, which is uncomfortable truths, but when we talk about them in, 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 in plan form and strategize form, we can be prepared for the things that come up versus shocked and surprised and defeated. Do you agree? Oh, absolutely. I mean, with anything in life, you shouldn't put all your eggs in one basket. Um, that's why omnipresence is, is so important. That's why the email list is so important. You can't put the growth of your business in the hands of a corporation that's just out for themselves. So, and yeah. They don't, they don't give a damn about you. And I don't mean to be so blunt, but I'm just trying to keep it super real because – do we not all have important shit we could be doing besides this? So let's be honest and let's take, if we're going to sit around and listen to people talk, let's make sure they're telling the truth and being concise and clear about it. And so the next thing I want to ask you about, because this is what I think the other biggest thing that causes people to fail is that they start listening to too many gurus. They, they, they start following too many people. And now all of a sudden they get pulled in a million different directions. And what I've found, now I do have a base foundation of knowledge, but so do most all of you if you've gone through, even at the very least, the challenge, let alone if you've dove into the blueprints. You all have a base foundation of knowledge as well. What I've found is that my income continues to go up in my life the more I tune people out the more I really work and focus on putting the blinders on and tuning most of the noise out and like kind of like being really freaking selective with what I listen to, what I watch and kind of who, 
who I get involved with. And every time you buy a coaching program or you get a course or you start it, you're getting involved with somebody new. And not everybody is who they say they are. And so it ends up hurting a lot of people because we're really, we're really ambitious, but we're naive. And so before you know it, you know, we've got all this crap going on and it's almost like overwhelming and defeating. So how do you avoid some of those pitfalls, some of those shiny objects, some of those gurus and goblins who may not, you know, may, may present well, but in the long term, it's just a lot of wasted time for them then to have another launch or another product or another strategy or another trend thing that they're doing. And I know a lot of people who have felt really defeated by being spread too thin like that. How do you avoid that? Um, yeah, I, I fell into that for a minute. Um, I think, I think it's because I, I, I didn't feel like I had enough knowledge or information to actually start. And I wanted, I wanted more, I wanted more, I wanted all the information. And then, and I finally realized that you don't have to have, you don't have to have everything perfect to get started. You, you start and then you learn as you go, um, chase, chase action, not perfection. Um, so yeah, it, it, it took me a minute, I, a week or two, I fell into that. And then I finally decided, you know, Hey, what, you know, I, I, I I have all of this information right here. I need to focus and I need to implement what I've already learned. And then if I need to learn more, I'll do it as I go, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to keep buying these different courses and keep um, education is great, but it, without action, it's, it's, it's worthless. Well, I always, my strategy about deciding if I'm going to learn from somebody or not is I look at their life. Mm -hmm. And I say, and I look at what they're doing, not what they're saying. So for a lot of people come into our community and they'll get, they'll get hit up by somebody on a social media platform. Somebody will reach out to them. They'll cold outreach. They'll say, Oh, are you not getting the support you need? I'll be your coach. I'll be your coach. But if we time out a second, just look at how this cat is living his life. He's got to go and reach out to people. That's called the 2022 yeah. version of knocking on a door. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah, that's, that's the bottom of the barrel. That's not what we want to be doing with our life. And that's one of the reasons why I got out of MLM. Cause I didn't want to cold call. I didn't want to prospect people. I didn't want to talk to friends and family. I didn't want to do three way calls. I hate being on the phone. And I finally got <laughs> honest about that. I finally got honest about that. I actually don't like talking on the phone. I don't like being on the phone. I don't talk <laughs> to anybody in this company <laughs> ongoing. I, we have a, you know, we run this operation here at Legendary with usually one executive call per week. And the rest of everything could be done in Slack via text. And so... Why do I think Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger are interesting? Because of their life, the quality of their life. Why do I not follow Tony Robbins? Not because I don't think he's not an incredible human being, because I don't want his life. I don't want to be traveling around all the time. I don't want to be. I just, I, I want to travel for leisure, not for work. I've already done that. And all, by the way, I've done big events before, had a pretty, had a company before where we sold information and we did huge events. And every 90 days, we we're putting 4,000 people in a room. It was exciting the first couple of times. And then it was a job. I want to be at home. So I got to watch how people live. I got to watch how people live. And, you know, I got to be real, I got to be real careful. Because a lot of people talk a lot of good shit, but in social media is deceiving some days. So that's why, and I heard this uh, another day last week on the, on, the, uh, on, on the show. Somebody said, I didn't even look at anybody in my niche. I tried to avoid kind of f following. And, and so that's something that a lot of us do when we first get started. We look around. And we imitate what we see. We model what we see. 
what are obviously you found your groove with the kind of that 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 different angle that we talked about before is there any other tips that you would give people to be able to find their own voice or their own message or become a little bit more comfortable in their own skin as they're creating and marketing uh, yeah. Um, well, like I said, you know, with the training, I take lots of notes and, and I did, I did the same thing when I first started. I had no idea. I'd never made any content before. So I, I kind of modeled other people, but you know, that, that felt kind of fake to me. And, and my goal from the beginning was to be just real and authentic and just be myself. So the videos that I make that are just me talking and, and telling my story and telling, you know, celebrating my small wins, my big wins, just, just relating to people that has, that has done so much better than the, than the, than the pointing or the, just the words on the screen or the trending sounds. I mean, I still do those because you have to, but those don't perform as well for me. So, I mean, you got to find your own voice and you got to not be afraid to, to, to try to relate to people because you gotta, if you're not, if they don't think you're real, then they're not going to be interested. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Finding your voice and not all, I mean, it's not like you have to go nowadays. You don't have to go on constant rants and talk in every video, but sprinkling in some of your personal self. So people feel like they know who is the person behind creating the content. Like they know you a little bit goes a long way. Would you agree? Absolutely. Mm hmm. Yeah. yeah, I've had so many people say, you know, just 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 message me or, or comment on my videos saying this is the, the most real video I've ever seen. This is wow. Thank you. You know, because, you know, most people, um, you know, don't break it down like you have or don't, you know, don't care. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, showing, you know, I was watching Survivor, the first episode of the new season of Survivor with with Aaron, my wife, last night and. Uh, we've been known to go on vacation and just then just sit around and binge like watching like Survivor, for example, or we did it one time with Walking Dead. I don't watch a lot of TV, but I'll those are two shows that I've watched with my wife and, and sort of binged on. So I was thinking about like what my strategy would be if I was going on Survivor and, and thank God I'm not. Um, and that I, I, I don't, I don't want to go work that hard for uh, the potential of a million dollars. That's what this industry has done for me, by the way, it's made me, when I look at survivor, I'm purely there for the entertainment and have absolutely no desire to go on the show. Um, whereas some people, they want to go on, they're like, oh man, shot at a million dollars. I'm like, I don't, I'm good. But anyways, <laughs> um, anyways, I, so I was like, what, what would my strategy be? And I thought about like, I thought about all the games that we play as human beings, you know what I mean? To try to get people to like us, you know, the takeaway, the playing hard to get, the don't let them know how smart you are. Don't let them know how dumb you are. All this bullshit. I mean, we have all the games and you know what? Never, I've never ever said or heard anybody say man, he, he's just too kind. He's just too kind. I've never heard anybody say that. And so I said to my wife, I think my strategy would just be kindness. It would just really be kindness. Now it's not that I wouldn't be aware and that I wouldn't be, you know, still trying to negotiate alliances and all that, but Nothing, it, nothing ever came from biting at somebody or telling them about themselves or being nasty. Nobody that has never worked in the game of persuasion, but so many of us bite at people. And so many of us, we, we, we like to tell people about themselves or we get angered by when people are mean and, and then we give anger back. We think that's the, you know, cause we get triggered up. And so the, the, the delighting the customer is a piece of advice that Warren Buffett gives to all his businesses. And I find that to just be true in life and business, that when you focus on the kindness, really just making people feel safe, cared for, and like you're going to be kind to them no matter what they do. 
You're not going to shame or blame or come. You're going to be kind to them. And they feel that, you know, that goes just as far, I think, as delivering like high value content. I think the kindness and actually coming across as just a decent, good person that wants to help. And you had said that a second ago, and that's what made me think of that. Do you, do you believe that? And do you, do you, are you aware of, or, or what advice would you give to people who, who may find, may think that sometimes it's, it would be good to, to fight with people in comments or to get, or to, you know, allow somebody to get them frustrated or mean and you know what I mean? Like to do, to do anything or show anything but kindness to your audience. Could you speak? Cause you just seem like such a kind and gentle person. And you also mentioned it a second ago. Well, um, just, just like what you said um, earlier, you, you look at people's life when you decide whether or not you want to do business with them. And, and so it's the same thing. Um, I remember one of the first videos of the challenge you asked, you know, what, what do you want to be known for? Um, so, you know, that's, that's what I want to be known for. I mean, it doesn't, yeah. does it, does it do any good to fight with people? I mean, sales 101 is, you know, find a problem, intensify the problem, you know, show them how your product will solve the problem. And that's going to be helping people solve their problems and their pain points and, and the things that they're struggling with and helping people not fighting with them. Yeah. It's, it's true. And as Jeff said, when you kill people with kindness, folks don't know how to respond. They really don't. I mean, because so many people, and this is one of the things that we, we forget. So many people are angry. They're, they're upset. They're frustrated and they are looking for somebody to fight with. They're <laughs> looking for somebody to blame. They're looking for somebody to, to, to kind of, you know, set up. And then when that person lashes back out at them, now it's your fault and you're a bad person. You're a bad guy. You're a bad woman. And, that, and they knew it. They knew it. And, and oftentimes I think people test other people just unconsciously, maybe because they have been burned in the past. So when we respond with kindness, when we respond gently, when we look at our audience like, man, these people are fragile, man, that it really is a shift because you step into a leadership mindset more so than just a, I've, I see these comments in our Facebook groups all the time. Like, God, I've been posting videos for, you know, two weeks now. Whew, feels like I saw this one. Feels like somebody said, feels like forever. Brother, if that's <laughs> you and you posted that, I'm not trying to shame or blame you. But look, I mean, it, it's it's you're just getting started, man. You're just getting started. And if you can turn that frustration into let me let me be a let me. Let me relate with other people who are frustrated and, and let them know, hey, I, I'm frust I've been frustrated. I can be frustrated from time to time. I know you're frustrated too. Here's what I'm doing about my frustration. You just became valuable. You went from not valuable to, to, to like, and that doesn't mean you're not a valuable human being. I'm just saying in the marketplace, you have to bring a product or a service to be a value in order to barter, trade, to have something to sell. And so it's like people think, well, I don't know what to sell. I don't know what to say. It's like you, if, you're, if you're a bump on a log, if you're complaining, you're, you're dead weight to the marketplace, to the economy. Do you understand? You're a consumer. If you mm -hmm. figure out how to even take your own mess and turn it into a message – Damn it, you just, you're now a value. It's that simple. Sometimes a positive attitude um, is value in, in 2022. you agree? Yeah, well, selling is nothing but a transference of emotion. And the emotion that you have is, is, is you know, is, is going to make or break you, whether it's good or bad. Yeah, it's going to make or break you and what you get in return, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. That's why when we talk about this being an inside game and success really being most about the dynamics and not the mechanics, it's it's it takes a while sometimes for that to sink in, you know, f to people. They they you know, one of the things that I that I um, that I I 
<laughs> it's so funny. You know, one of one of the things that I I, I gave a recommendation to 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 a, a, a student a while ago was I looked at his content and it was all it was all positive, all and he wasn't getting trapped. He was like trying just up. And I said, well, I mean, there, there can also be times when you're too positive, right? You got to mm -hmm. mix in a little bit of reality and a little bit of humor, right? You got to balance mm -hmm. your stuff and make it real in 2022. You can't just be full of motivational quotes because now you just, you look like a nameless, faceless, just conveyor belt of memes. And that's, 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 fake. that's fake, right? Mm -hmm. So we have to weave in struggle. We And that's why I say your struggles can be your biggest strengths. Those are the things that people can relate to. Have you, have you found that to be true? And how would you define or explain being relatable to people that, you know, who are new, the power of being relatable versus, you know, trying to look perfect? Yeah. Um, I mean, people want to see real life. I mean, I used to, you know, have to, you know, have, you know, I'll, you know, I'll be, you know, dressed and done up to have do a video. But now I'm just like, you know, I come in from the lake and I'll do a video. And sometimes those will perform better than the ones that I was all pretty and, you know, and uh, so it's, it's like people want to see you real life and they want to see that you're a real person. And um, that's how they're going to relate to you. Yeah. Well, gosh. You have given an incredible amount of value this morning. Thank you. And the beautiful thing is, is that, um, you know, when you do the work initially, like it becomes this kind of compounding thing that not only creates income, but now you have something to teach and talk about. And you're kind of like, like an authority, like in, an influencer in a way in this industry. And it's just amazing to me that you can become literally you go from zero to hero, you know what I mean? In just a matter of time, you know, and you may not be a hero to everybody, but to somebody, to somebody or multiple people, you are a hero. You know what I mean? Like you have introduced them to something that was so valuable, whether it be some knowledge or some information that they didn't have, or maybe it's been significant savings through a tough time that you're like literally a hero and you were a, like nobody to them just not too long ago. You know what I mean? And it mm -hmm. wasn't that they found you, you found them. Like you did the work to put yourself out there and to, and to get what you're now, what you have and what you're building. So good for you. Congrats. And hopefully you'll come back and keep talking about it with us. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the neat thing is, is I'm, I'm, I'm influencing my kids too. My kids are young adults. And, and at first, when I first started this, they, they, I mean, they didn't have a whole lot of faith in me. They were like, if mom's doing it, it's probably too late to get into it, you know, because <laughs> uh, they're young adults. And, <laughs> and so they're here to do what on TikTok, you know? And so now, you know, three months later, they've seen how much, how much success I've had. And they're like, okay, what, what's the link? <laughs> I love that. Uh, well, that that's the best thing these years could hear. That's wonderful. Thank you for sharing. Let's end mm -hmm. with that. And for all of you who, you know, are, are that, it, whether you have kids that are anywhere from 10 to up, they're probably going to be giving you a little bit of a side eye when you say that you're, you know, going to be marketing on whether it be TikTok, Instagram, whatever, but we got the strategies and the secrets to make you look like a rock star. So <laughs> hang in there. All right, Stacy. take care. Be well. Thank um, you. you too. My best to your family and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Okay. Thank you. All right. See you. All right, my friends, uh, really cool conversation. Uh, go and follow her and you can check out both of her profiles. I'm going to flash them up online at the lake deals is her first TikTok profile she shared with us today. And the second is online at the lake. And so, um, man, wow, it's amazing what can happen uh, in just a short period of time, and especially if those of you who have these skills in, in different areas of your life or knowledge that you, you, you don't really know what to do with, but you know it's valuable. What I, what I believe is that as you get into this process, like Stacy, you'll start to see 
not only how a lot of people out on YouTube and on Facebook and Instagram and TikTok are making money in ways that you didn't see it before, but also how you can get your piece of the pie. Because remember, Zuckerberg, you know, all these cats, they're getting theirs, right? And there's, there's a, they want you, they actually want you to get yours too. That's the thing. They want you to come create content on the platform and they'll pay you for it. Not only can you do affiliate marketing or you can sell your own course coaching program or event, they will also, they're all starting programs. YouTube's already had it for a long time where they'll pay you if your videos get a lot of views. So there's income and income streams that can be created from your business that you don't even know about, you know, and that you'll learn and be made aware of as you go. A lot of opportunity, tons, more than any of us can take advantage of. Trust me, just get started. Get out of your own way. Stop getting ready to get ready and get in the game. We'll see you back here for another episode tomorrow. Tomorrow.